Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. It's been a while since we have, strictly figuratively of course, urinated on a true Picasso among synthesizers. So today we are going to talk about the Alpha Juno 1. This classic Roland synth is primarily known for three things. That one patch that kept 90s dance floors clean, some true analog Juno goodness and our favorite synth manufacturer hiding all this behind a another truly soul-crushing user interface. At the first glance Roland was ticking all the no we're not ripping off the DX7 front panel, the labeling is red boxes. I know you're all here for that one patch. <laughs> I had to reprogram it as it was overwritten on this particular synth, so please leave a comment how close I've got. Sound design archaeology and danger zone UI aside, we are still talking about a Juno. Six voices of orderly DCO awesomeness. <laughs> can be tweaked using the smooth running alpha dial. And one of these 80s displays Roland is still using in the top of the line instruments. They also still mostly stick to the dreadful all parameters in one endless menu philosophy found on the Alpha. Sysex is an option, dedicated controllers and software editors are readily available, and there's an Alpha DUI for the RetroKit's RK002. While the one oscillator synth engine itself is conventionally structured. There are a few things that set it apart from most other synthesizers. Sawtooth waveforms can be set to almost digital sounding variations. Which, Nick Bet be praised, can be modulated in a way quite similar to PWM. It can be mixed with noise. The very Juno-esque pulses and sub-oscillator which are nice too. This architecture allows for complex spectra especially in combination with a fast LFO. Vintage Roland filters are loved for a reason. But programming the relentlessly AT single envelope with its dedicated time and level parameters is certainly an acquired taste. There are, however, four predefined macros allowing for quick and sturdy tweaks of modulation and envelope behavior. And rather sluggish access to the filter via brilliance. The undocumented unison mode is shrouded in mystery, but as long as you don't define a chord yourself, chord mode sounds pretty unison to me. Especially nice with portamento. It's great for housey stabs too. Being a real Juno, the synth with its unique chorus. Excels at generating punchy basses, classy brass sounds, warm strings, eighties cheese analog, and old school effects. I would describe the overall design as utilitarian, actual keyboard players will opt for version number 2 with its velocity sensitive 61 keys keybed, every serious synthesizer should have a full MIDI trio, tape backup and foot switch slash expression connectivity are nice to have and true synth hats don't need no music rest. The times in which you could find one of these 1986 beauties for cheap at a yard sale are certainly over, so thanks to Asife for lending me another gem from his collection. Roland Alphas are not only true rave icons, but also among the last somewhat affordable analog Junos. Is the user interface a deal breaker here? 
You have already heard a completely Hoover-free version of the intro tune, a true exercise in self-restraint. Time for a quick and easy Juno jam. I've never compared the Alpha to one of the classic Junos, but at least for my needs the magic is there. Punchy, lush and a distinct modern sheen I'm missing on the 106. Programming patches with a minimalist UI isn't exactly an intellectual challenge, but it is very, very tedious. Let's go a little deeper and give the Alpha dial another spin or two in a split screen jam. wasn't so bad. Although the workflow is about as nerve-wracking as programming a DX7, finding sweet spots is easy and while I was missing the mysterious warmth associated with other 80s analogs, it has quite a few tricks up its sleeve. Speaking of, I wanna know if we can use the unmistakable tonal spectrum of the Hoover without obvious human resource dominator warshipping in I'm not an alpha, I'm a better with benefits, funky fresh Sigma house for 70s space Pirates. There's a reason why synth aficionados are still lusting for vintage Roland. Iconic tones for days, solid hardware and the feeling of owning a piece of music history. The Alpha is no exception. It was, however, together with a JX8P, one of Roland's pre-D50 attempts to battle the dominance of Yamaha's DX range, which is both a blessing and a curse. Sure, the UI is yet another 80s crime against humanity and the extended sonic range of the oscillators presumably designed to mimic the literal bells and whistles of FM are a welcome addition to the otherwise conventional Juno architecture. All that being said, there is one thing that completely boggles my mind. Why did Roland release two classic Juno boutiques when there is still no JU01? I wouldn't mind a few knobs and faders though. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron, leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show and use one of the links down below that help the channel regardless of what your bad gear guess commands you to buy.